Distinguished guests, uh, my family and friends, fellow veterans, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and women, uh, Marines. <laughs> Thank you for being with me on this very special day. I am deeply humbled. Before I get into these prepared remarks, I would like to remind you boys that I gave you a good glow in the dark, counter salt coin. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that still takes priority over any of the other ones. But so, as I said yesterday at the White House, uh, this medal represents the the great work of of the team and all those men who are sitting with me today. We work together as a tight-knit family. We trusted one another and we share a bond that's far greater than words can describe. We're truly brothers, whether we speak every day or not for months or years. At any time we know, we can just pick right up right where we left off. And it means a lot. To this day, there's still nothing we wouldn't do for each other. This Medal of Honor is for those who didn't make it in past and present battles, those who are still out there confronting the enemy and building partnerships, and my teammates who persevered on April 6th, 2008. For me, like many others, joining America's fighting force in response to the 9-11 attacks was the right thing to do. It's hard to believe that it's been 17 years since that evil had struck our land. But we stood up together and we made a difference. That is why I joined to try and make a difference. I'm so, the, I'm so proud that my parents, grandfather and great-grandfather had served before me and they taught me the value of service before self. So I was actually born on December 7th, um, and so growing up I learned a lot about Pearl Harbor, probably too much, you guys should have <laughs> done less. <laughs> but never imagining that I would uh, see another direct attack on America. As a man, I couldn't believe what I was watching on TV. I was in graduate school at Washington State University, and like so many others, I was angry watching the attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon and the down plane in Pennsylvania. I could not believe what was happening. It was my duty to join the military to help. And eventually donning the Green Beret and eventually becoming their medic. So before every, before every battle that we were, or mission that we would go out on, um, unfortunately he couldn't be here today, but no. Uh, one of, the, one of the guys with us, Ryan, he would always take his commando squad and he would bring them over to me and he would say, if something happens to me, find Ron. And little did I know that the calls for Ron on April 6, 2008 would come from all around me. The Special Forces Operational Detachment, Alpha 3336, was a strong family overcoming the odds. The ODA was on a mission to capture or kill a high-value target in Shock Valley, Afghanistan. For over six hours, we fought together, and it seemed like an eternity. But we never stopped working together. Everyone knew their job and was ready to do it. From the moment we got off the helicopters, we were surrounded by a harsh terrain and a well-prepared enemy who had the stronghold. As we navigated through the valley, insurgent sniper fire, rocket propellant grenades, small arms and machine gun fire forced us into defensive fighting positions. Within the first few moments of the fight, I heard the first calls for help, and I moved to a wounded Afghan commando. As I finished helping him, I remember looking over the valley and seeing an RPG land near some of the defending troops, quickly followed by calls for Ron coming down the line. So I knew immediately who, who had been hurt. I didn't have long to help treat uh, Ryan's uh, shrapnel wounds before hearing radio calls that the forward assault element had been pinned down 
and more casualties needed help. All I remember is we're gonna get to my brothers. I don't remember gunfire, I don't remember obstacles. Over the course of the battle, the casualties continued to mount, both Afghan and American, and I relied on my training, and I tried to focus on one thing at a time, one problem at a time, and worked as long as I could. I will always be grateful to have served alongside you guys. It was tough, but I was glad I could be there for you on that day. Two amazing warriors did lose their lives that day. An Afghan commando named Bahadeen, became close blade, um, and one of our interpreters, Edris C.K. Han. They died that day fighting to make the world a better place. We were always close with our interpreters, and we rely on them to accomplish every mission. Two of them are here with us today. Like them, CK always dreamed of making it to America. And while there was nothing I could do for him that day, I know that his name lives on. My son Tyler's middle name is Edris to bring a small piece of CK um, to the States. There's nothing more sacred than family and my brothers from that battle and alongside with them, their, their families that are here today as well. My family gave me great values, and for my wife and sons, Cameron, Tyler, Miranda, I love you guys. Your constant support over the years has kept me going. You've given me many home front celebrations with every soccer game, with every t-ball game, with every school event. We always get stronger and better together. This family reunion with our extended military family is a reminder of how strong and resilient we all are when it comes to God and country. I wear this uniform so proudly, adorned with a medal of honor for those who didn't make it, for those who are still out there fighting, and especially for the men of ODA 3336. God bless America. Thank you.